Looking for a gorgeous new saloon not defined by its premium badge? How about something with a distinctive design that offers advanced technology, excellent safety features and dynamic performance? All for a relatively affordable price tag. Hi, I'm Tom from OSV. This is the new Genesis G70 and in today's review we'll find out why it's worth considering over those German alternatives. Never heard of Genesis, it's Hyundai's luxury division like Lexus is to Toyota and they're the new kids on the block in the UK's premium segment. The brand made its introduction in Europe in the middle of last year with the launch of the G80 large executive saloon and the GV80 mid-sized SUV. They followed that up later in the year with this G70 saloon and its sibling the GV70 compact crossover. But why does this model exist? Well it's positioned as an alternative to German branded rivals like the Audi A4 the BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes C-Class, as well as popular executive offerings like the Alfa Romeo Giulia and the Jaguar XE. So if you're looking for a vehicle from this class, is it worth paying less and going with the G70? I'll answer that question today by exploring the exterior and interior design, the safety, the technology and practicality, and how all these factors compare with the competition. Plus, we'll take a look at the two drivetrains and the host of trim levels on offer to help you find that perfect specification. But before that, head over to the OSV website to browse the latest special offers on the G70 and the other Genesis models available, and subscribe to the OSV channel for the latest comprehensive vehicle reviews. Let's start with the exterior design, and wow, take a look at this front end. It's very prominent and distinctive when compared to other premium saloons in its segment. Very impressed. I like the creases on the bonnet and how they flow down to center your attention on what Genesis calls its bold crest grille. And I enjoy the trapezoidal piano black design to that. Rather interestingly, this is positioned lower than the quad LED headlamps, which are in a two-line signature with the bodywork almost cutting through them like butter. And that creates a really dynamic look to the front end here. Really impressed, absolutely love it. And it's much better than the rear end, which we're gonna check out in just a moment. The elegant and sleek lines continue working their way down the side profile, and these side vents serve to enhance the car's sporty and aerodynamic appearance. Alloy wheels then, so we have 19 inch wheels with this top grade Sportline variant, and they come equipped with red Brembo brake calipers as well. As standard, they'll be 17 inches in size, and I love the matte black finish that we've got on them as well. If you've got your eyes on this body color, it's called Mallorca Blue, and it's a metallic shade, and these set you back around 750 pounds. Loads of other options here as well that you can dive into. If you're not that bothered about spending more on color though, there are two solid paints to choose from, outer white and Siberian ice, which look really nice as well. As you can see, it's quite a long vehicle, but it's actually shorter than the A4, C-Class and 3 Series, coming in at around 4,685 millimeters. This means that that rear end isn't gonna be poking out as much in a tight parking space. Height-wise, it's identical to those models, and it isn't as wide as the 3 Series, so it's easier to keep centered in a lane. The design of the rear end certainly isn't as dynamic as the front, but there are some things to admire here. Those LED headlamps make an appearance once again, and I like how they curve around towards the tailgate. You get oval dual exhaust down here, and the Genesis badging couldn't be more clearly displayed, but I guess this is to advertise a relatively new brand to UK motorists. But how much stuff can you cram into the back of the G70 when compared to those key rivals? Let's pop open that tailgate and find out. The G70 offers a boot capacity of 330 litres, and that is dwarfed by some of its rivals like the 3 Series, that gives you 480 litres, and the C-Class and the A4 that offer around 455 litres. But this should be enough space for four, maybe five of these small carry-on suitcases. So let's just slide these in here and take a look. Yep, four will fit quite comfortably. Five maybe at a push if, you're, if you manage to stack one on top. And that should translate 
to enough room for two to three larger adult suitcases or a kid's bike with the wheel taken off. Practicality features are a bit thin on the ground, so there's four hooks dotted around the place to strap those objects down that like to move around. And there's an area with netting for golf balls and any other ball shaped objects, again, to stop them from flowing around while on the go. There's a bit of underfloor storage. So if we lift this bit up, it's not particularly elegant, but there's some space here for odd bits and bobs that you want to keep out of the prying eyes of peeping toms. If you need to extend the boot capacity, you can do by folding down the rear seats in a 60-40 arrangement. So let's do that now and fold down those rear seats. There's just a latch on the top left-hand corner there. Pull that down and then we folded down the left bench and the middle seat there. That would allow you to slide through those awkwardly sized and heavy objects into the rear cabin space and that should be more than enough room for an adult's bike with the wheel taken off. If you need more boot space without folding down the rear bench for those family holidays and weekend getaways then consider instead opting for the G70 Shooting Brake Estate as that boosts the boot capacity to 465 litres. We're going to bring you a full length in-depth review of that model very soon. When it's live we'll put it a pop-up banner up there click it to go watch that video so guys if you're impressed with what you've seen of the g70 so far and you want to dive into this range in a bit more detail to find that model that best suits you personally then get in touch with our vehicle experts on 01 903 538 835 or you could just click that other pop-up banner just up there to book a quick date or time for a chat whenever works for you really but I think it's about time we get behind the wheel of the G70 now, give it a test drive and see what it's like on UK roads. The G70's drivetrain lineup is nice and simple. There's just one petrol and one diesel option available. No hybrid variant yet, unfortunately. Hopefully this gets added to the range later down the line or perhaps with a second generation model, whenever that may be. The petrol variant then, so that is a two litre turbo four cylinder unit under the bonnet. That outputs 194 brake horsepower and 353 newton meters of torque for a pretty rapid 0 to 62 time of 6.1 seconds. So it's quite a quick premium saloon off the block. Both variants are configured with the eight speed automatic transmission. There's no manual option available, but you're not going to miss that. Automatic is nicely implemented here. It glides through the gears seamlessly. And when you come to take off at a junction or a roundabout, you'll find that the car doesn't hesitate or jolt. You just put your foot down on the accelerator and there you go, get that instant hit of torque. Both versions are also rear-wheel drive. There's no all-wheel drive option available. If this is something that's important to you, or perhaps you frequently drive in slippery and wet conditions, you'll want to look more towards something like the BMW 3 Series X-Drive variant. But the rear-wheel drive hasn't hampered my driving experience at all. There's a nice amount of feel with those wheels and that creates a really responsive and accurate driving feel. Fuel economy and CO2 emissions is unfortunately where this G70 pales in comparison to its key arrivals. So Genesis claims that you can achieve up to 35.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. That's not brilliant is it, especially when compared to uh, what's offered by the A4, 3 Series and C-Class where you do have hybrid variants that help to maximise fuel economy. CO2 emissions can go up to 201 grams per kilometre as well. So if you do consider getting this petrol version as your next company car, it will be placed in the highest benefit in kind or company car tax band for 2022 to 2023. So it's not the best option there. And this is where a hybrid variant would have been welcome in the lineup. The diesel unit is what's powering our test drive model. This is a 2.2 litre four cylinder engine. It outputs 197 brake horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque for a slightly reduced naught to 62 time over that petrol unit around 7.4 seconds. So yeah, quite still quite impressive for a premium saloon. That's gonna give you enough oomph to nip into those tight gaps in traffic around town and overtake the slow moving cars on A roads and motorways. 
Fuel economy, again, not too impressive with this diesel model. So it achieves up to 44.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. So it's not as good as something like the Mercedes C300D that achieves up to 54 MPG. And CO2 emissions, it can output as high as 173 grams per kilometer. So once again, this places it in a higher benefit in kind tax bracket than those key rivals, the A4, C-Class, and the 3 Series. Though I am enjoying the implementation of the diesel engine here. It's impressive how quickly it gets off the block at those lower revs. And as I said before, when you come to a junction, it doesn't hesitate at all, thanks to that really refined automatic transmission. The softness or the stiffness of the suspension depends on the driving mode that you've selected. So I've been driving the G70 for the majority of my time in the comfort mode and that softens the suspension for undulating B roads such as the one that we're driving on right now and it does a great job of smoothing out those undulations that when you go over a particularly deep pothole like I'm trying to do now um, the impact of that is quite severe throughout the cabin and there is a little bit of vibration as well which can create a little bit of discomfort Comfort. That's made worse when you have the car in sport mode, which stiffens and tightens the suspension to provide a sportier driving feel. Feels great when you're driving um, with that mode on an A road or motorway, but on these country roads and B roads, the, the ride quality does get a bit herky-jerky here, unfortunately. Though putting the car into sport mode is absolutely essential when navigating around a tight corner, bend or roundabout as it reduces the intensity of the body lean which is quite severe in those other driving modes. Um, in sport the uh, side cushions actually move inwards towards you as if they're kind of hugging you so when you go around those corners you're held a lot more tightly in place so do consider that when, um, when driving this car around those tight bends. Also it stiffens the steering a little bit more as well makes it a bit more firm similar to what you'd find in an M Sport version of the 3 Series. Again re reinforcing that driving experience. So yeah, it's a well implemented sport mode. When it comes to noise and vibration, this is where the diesel engine pales in comparison to its rivals and it's just not as refined in this regard. Engine noise is quite severe, so it makes it quite a racket, especially when you get off the block. And even as I'm cruising along now at 30 miles an hour, you can hear it humming away. You can drown this out by playing an album or a podcast, something like that, though the sound is very present and very felt. Um, and when you're up to a faster speed on an A-road or motorway, the road noise does start to seep into the cabin. Um, you can prevent this by sticking the car into comfort mode, that softens the ride quality. Sport mode does make this a little bit more severe. Wind noise though, pretty much a non-issue. I'm not hearing any bellowing coming from the mirrors or from the side pillar or the windscreen all nicely isolated so that shows that Genesis took aerodynamics into account when designing the G70 and they've done a great job here. What about visibility? What is that like? That's often a point of contention with premium saloons but it's not too bad here with the G70. The side pillars here are fairly slim and they don't create too much of a blind spot when you come to a junction or traffic lights. They will say when you're navigating around a roundabout say in the right hand lane so you've got to go around it quite tight. This bit of plastic here does obscure your view just a little bit and I would have liked that to have been just a bit of glass or something like that you can see through but very minor complaint there. Door mirrors are hefty, they're nice and wide giving you a really good view of what's behind you and that's important because the view out of the back window is not bad but it's fairly restrictive and when that gets you know fogged up on a cold winter's night or frosted over there's no wiper to clear that at all so you're going to have to rely on those mirrors but that's going to be fine for everyday driving. If you opt for the higher spec grades you can have blind spot monitoring integrated within the mirrors themselves and they will light up to alert you of any cars passing close by. Also fantastic fantastic feature here, we're just going to pull over to demonstrate that. So if I indicate left here, it shows me a view of my left rear blind spot directly onto that digital instrument cluster and that's something that I've not encountered with a vehicle before. Great little feature that and I'd love to see that in more models and exactly the same happens when you go right again then as we indicate out. It's going to show my right rear blind spot, incredibly handy when manoeuvring in, um, into and out of those tight spaces. What's all this tech like to use while on the go then? Well, this wide digital instrument cluster displays all the key information where you need it. And if you've got navigation enabled, that's gonna show up directly in the center of that display. It'll also show up 
on your head up display if you configured that this comes as standard with the innovation pack that's essentially this car's technology package uh, so it will show towing directions and they're projected directly onto the windscreen that's incredibly handy you don't have to glance down at that display or that display you can just look straight ahead and get that information the central infotainment display is quite nice to use while on the go the graphics are nice and sharp it's quite responsive and when we slide on over to see the main options there not too much of an input delay and the icons are nice and large they're easy to see while on the go though if we go into map right now you can see that as we scroll around there is a little bit of a delay more than, than what you would find with uh, the 3 Series and the new BMW iDrive system which is the class leading infotainment setup in any car and is very responsive. Um, a few other complaints, I would like it to be slightly more angled towards the driver um, especially when you're swiping from the far left hand side you do have to reach quite, quite far and then take your eyes away uh, from the road as a result uh, but I do love how that all the climate controls are not integrated into this display they're all physical buttons down there. When it comes to safety this G70 Saloon plus the Shooting Brake Estate and the GV70 SUV all scored the maximum five star rating by Euro NCAP that's a great result there. Uh, this G70 Saloon scored particularly highly in the adult occupant and child occupant safety tests, scoring 89% and 87% respectively. The model was also recognised for its many advanced driver assistance features that come as standard. Uh, some of these include autonomous emergency braking, driver attention assist and lane keep assist. Other highlight advanced safety features include highway attention assist and that ensures you maintain a safe distance from the vehicle in front and that also keeps you centered in the lane when driving on the motorway as well as rear cross traffic avoidance so that uses the side radars to detect and prevent impact with any obstacles that you may not have seen when reversing so yeah safety is something you just don't have to worry about with this G70. I also need to highlight Genesis's excellent five-year care plan so this covers scheduled servicing for five years or 50,000 miles whichever comes first and they'll collect and return the car to your door if you need a courtesy car during this time they will provide that free of charge as well uh, you get free over the air software updates to the in-car navigational system and you get five years of roadside assistance that covers you 24 hours a day 365 days a year all across Europe so it's a fantastic service plan there maybe not as good as Kia's seven-year 100,000 mile warranty but it's still one of the best offered by a manufacturer Right guys, let's go park up and I'll show you all the different systems that are at play when you reverse into a space and then we can dive into the interior in a bit more detail. Okay guys, let's reverse into this space. So as standard, you get rear parking sensors and a rear view camera that displays on the central touchscreen there. So you can see the yellow guidelines directing me into that space. And there we go, perfectly lined up now. And we can reverse straight back. Maybe come over here a bit. And we'll stop on that red guideline. There we go, a perfect park, if I do say so myself. I'm really impressed with the G70's interior, guys. There's a great use of materials on offer. They all feel very high quality, and there's lots of squishy plastics as well as attractive trims. Love the lever wrapped around the steering wheel here, and it feels nice and firm when you press down on it. Your palms are not gonna slide down the wheel on a sweaty day. That actually feels like a M Sport BMW steering wheel, which is very much to my taste. Love the soft touch material for the dash. There's a lovely chrome strip running alongside the center there as well. And then you can spot with the lever trim that we've chosen for the interior. There's a couple of choices here. We've gone with sandstorm gray and obsidian black. So you can see the sandstorm gray on the seats, obsidian black for a number of the different plastics dotted around. So really nice effect here inside. I also really enjoy the spin patterned aluminium down there in the center console and on the doors as well. It's not used too much throughout the cabin and that's a good thing because it really does stand out and it nicely complements the rest of the trim here. Though it isn't as plush and premium as you'd find inside an Audi A4, the quality is really good considering this is, well, just a much more affordable vehicle. But if you do want to create more of a premium and plush feel inside, do consider opting for Nappa leather with quilting. Uh, these interior trims will set you back £2,470. There's uh, three different options here, including that stand, sandstorm grey and the obsidian black.
You sit quite low down in the G70, but electric adjustment for the front seat comes as standard, so it's really easy to find a comfortable position for you. Let's raise myself up all the way then, because I do like a good view of the road. This is as high as you can go. That's probably a little bit too high for me, actually. This is perfect. It's got a nice view down the bonnet there. If you are six foot over, you can come down a little bit more, give yourself more legroom, and you can recline like so. All of this is controlled, by the way, using the buttons to the right-hand side of the driver's seat. Lumbar support also comes as standard, nicely complementing this diesel model where you'll likely be doing long journeys and you want to remain comfortable throughout. If you want to enhance comfort to its fullest degree, consider adding the Comfort Pack as one of the optional extras here. It'll set you back around £1,850 and you get a load of comfort enhancing features such as electric side bolsters. So that's what I showed you earlier when I switched the car into sport mode. The cushions come in just a little bit more and they almost cosset you so you shake around a little bit less when going around corners. You also get tilt and adjustment for the steering wheel as you can see and you get memory functions for the driver's seat. So this is really handy if you have more than two people driving this car. Um, you can assign your seating configuration to one of those profiles so when you get in you don't have to faff around finding your ideal seating configuration. Just click that button and the car will set it up for you as so. Behind the steering wheel, as standard, you get an 8-inch cluster display, though if you upgrade to the Innovation Pack, which is essentially the car's technology package, you get a much larger 12.3-inch 3D cluster. And the technology employed here is quite reminiscent of something like the Nintendo 3DS, and some of that information really pops and comes alive. Uh, it tracks the driver's gaze uh, to provide a three-dimensional depth perception, and the information shown changes according to what driving mode you've selected. Uh, the car's definitely taken a note out of BMW's book for this one, but I think Genesis have gone a step further, and it's a very impressive display. With the Innovation Pack, you also get a head-up display, and that projects driving information, uh, safety information, turn-by-turn -turn navigations and an always-on speedometer directly onto the windscreen so it's as if it's on the road ahead. You don't have to look at any of these other screens to get distracted. Uh, nice little feature that one but it's a shame it's locked behind that tech pack. It doesn't come with any of the trim levels as standard. Other highlights of the innovation pack which costs £3,250 and can be added to any of those different trim levels uh, includes a panoramic view monitor which switches on uh, when you put it into reverse and gives you that nice Nice bird's eye view. Uh, the blind spot monitoring feature which you saw earlier during the drive. You get the intelligent front lighting system as well that helps reduce glare and improve visibility for nighttime driving. Plus you get a wireless phone charger down there in the centre console. Let's take a closer look at the infotainment screen. So it's a 10.25 inch Navi display as Genesis calls it. Uh, you get a DAB radio, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Loads pretty quick as you just saw. Um, it's generally quite impressive, it's just not as good as the BMW iDrive system which is class leading in my opinion. I like that there are shortcut buttons just below the display there to navigate to those key essential menus. They're nice and large as well so they're easy to press while on the go. Let's then explore the other things on offer with the centre console then. Lovely big air vents, a massive uh, warning button there straight in the middle. And then we've got the uh, start stop button just there as well. Love that all the climate controls are physical buttons. None of that rubbish that's incorporated into the display that you see in some cars. Though there is a climate section with the menu as well which gives you some more detailed overview of what you're doing but you can just control the climate using these buttons and they're really responsive they're nice to press when driving from A to B. Just below that is a place where the wireless phone charger will be if you've opted for the innovation pack if you haven't it's just going to be a nice little storage compartment for your phone and that's accompanied by a 12 volt socket and a USB port. Keep making our way down then, you'll spot the automatic gear selector. Quite like the look of this and the chrome surrounding that, very nice indeed. Got the drive mode select button. I like actually that this isn't, you know, three individual buttons to switch between the modes. You just toggle them like so. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once you're used to it, you can literally just drive along, flick them like that, and you're already into sport or comfort mode. It's quite intuitive. Uh, the cup holders are excellent as well. They hold a nice big bottle like this one comfortably. That's not going to sway around while on the go. It's nice and secure there. 
and then we've got a generous storage compartment in the center it doesn't go down particularly far uh, but it's a perfect place for chewing gum and odd bits and bobs plus there's a usb port in there as well brief note on the sound the standard system is absolutely fine but it's not going to blow you away if you are an audiophile consider adding the optional lexicon premium sound system for 790 pounds you can have this with the higher spec grades for this car this adds 15 speakers around the cabin creating a surround sound experience that is a lot more crisp and clear so do consider adding that if that's your thing I'm a little disappointed with the size of the door bins. They're very narrow. You can't fit a large bottle like so in there. Um, a 300 mil bottle would even struggle to, to fit in there. And then the objects that are down below, they're gonna be hard to get out just to do, due to the shape of it. So pretty disappointed with that. The glove box though isn't too bad. So it's plenty of space for those manuals which come nicely presented in a gorgeous box. Thank you Genesis for that. And there's plenty of room left in there for odd bits and bobs. Plus you get a sunglasses compartment always nice to see if you're thinking it's a bit dark and gloomy in the front here you can add a sunroof for 900 pounds that's going to brighten up the cabin and improve ventilation but this does come at the cost of headroom in the back as it reduces the roof lining by a couple of centimeters but what is it like in the back without that sunroof is there going to be plenty of space for rear passengers let's go take a look so this is where the sloping saloon body style starts to compromise some of the room in the interior. Let's start by examining legroom. So as you can see, I can't really stretch out too far and my knees are sitting up quite high. Though saying that, I am really comfortable due to how nicely supported these seats are and they are slightly reclined as well um, and the material really nicely digs into your back. So for those longer journeys, should be absolutely fine in the back here. Headroom though, not so great. So I'm 5'8". If I lean all the way back, you can see I haven't got a lot of room to work with now. That's due to how the uh, body style starts to slope down towards the rear end. If you are six foot or over, you might just be touching that roof lining. I do really like how wide the door opens though. Look at that, nearly 90 degrees. So it's gonna be really easy to load a bulky kid's seat and strap them down to either of the Isofix fittings. We can get a better look at the door now, which has many of those lovely embellishments we saw in the front. We've got that lovely patterned aluminium, the chrome and the interior trim we've gone for. Really impressed with that. And I love that the high quality extends into the back here. If you haven't got a middle passenger, we can fold this bit down. That will reward you with a couple of cup holders and a makeshift central armrest, which is one of the more comfortable armrests I've come across in a new car. If you need somewhere to put a bulky bottle, then these cup holders should be ideal. I mean, they don't really fit mine, unfortunately. Um, how about the netting for the back of this seat then? Not bad, though that's probably gonna roll around while on the move, unless you really shove it down there. It's definitely not gonna go in the door bins because those are quite narrow, as we saw in the front. So yeah, storage in the back, not fantastic. But I do quite like the central cluster here for the climate. We can adjust the air intensity, but not the temperature. And there's another USB port down there. What's it gonna be like for the middle passenger? Let's slide over quite awkwardly and find out. And yeah, the experience, as always, really not gonna be fantastic. The bulky tunnel here really stands out and you're gonna to have to put your legs of either side of that encroaching on the personal space of those other rear passengers. And you're not getting a lot of support from the seat either. It feels very plasticky behind there. There is a bit of a leather trim, but it's not supporting my back. So I wouldn't really call this a five seat. I'd call this a four seater. Three adults in the back here is gonna get very uncomfortable for those long journeys. Overall guys, aside for some comfort and practicality issues here and there, I'm really impressed with the G70's interior. It's so close to being on par with those German alternatives and perhaps with a subsequent generation model, it might just get there. But now it's time to explore my top three highlights of each of the trim levels. The entry level model premium line starts from £33,450 and for that you get dual front LED headlights, a rear view camera and that lovely 10.25 inch Navi display. In the middle of the pack is Luxury Line, that's priced for £38,450 and for that you get heated front seats and a heated steering wheel. Plus an electronically operated tailgate which you can open by pressing that button on the key fob. And finally the top spec grade Sport Line, that's what we've outfitted our model with here. That starts from £39,720 and the highlight are these gorgeous 19 inch Sport alloy wheels with Brembo brake calipers plus just overall sportier exterior styling 
to dive into the trim levels in more detail with a vehicle expert, call the number in the banner below or just click that pop-out banner above. So, should you buy, lease or finance a Genesis G70? Well, if you're looking for an attractive and distinctive premium saloon, this is the best looking one on the market, in my opinion. Genesis absolutely smashed it out of the park with the exterior design. I'm also really impressed with the upmarket interior. No, it's not quite Audi A4 levels of quality, but it's getting there and hopefully it will get there with a second generation model. It's also very well equipped to standard with that rear view camera and that large infotainment display. And you benefit from Genesis's five year warranty and the excellent five star safety rating that's been awarded to this car and all of its other models currently available in the UK. Any downsides? Any room for improvement? Well, the lack of engine options for one, it would have been nice to have a hybrid drivetrain available in the lineup from launch, and that diesel engine could certainly be more fuel efficient. The boot space, while not too bad, does pair in comparison to rivals, and that rear space is tight, especially for adults. And up front, technology-wise, it's not as advanced as you'll find inside a 3 Series. Overall, I've really enjoyed my time test driving the G70. It's been a breath of fresh air getting behind the wheel of a saloon that isn't from a German-branded manufacturer. And Genesis bring their own character to this segment. And it's all rather exciting. To browse the latest special offers on the G70, head over to the OSV website. And if you found today's review helpful, guys, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the OSV channel for the latest in-depth reviews. And once you're on board, make sure to click that notification bell to get notified when a new video goes live. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Take care and safe driving.